Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saturday, the 13th of November, 2021, of the 32nd week in Ordinary Time, is the Memorial of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, increase my faith and make it strong that I may never doubt your word and promise to be with me always. In every situation I face, whether trials, setbacks, or loss, may I always find strength in your unfailing love and find joy and contentment in having you alone as the treasure of my heart. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture, but first, an overview. Francis was born of a pious family in Lombardy, Italy, in 1850. She founded the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart in 1880, responding to Bishop, now Blessed John Baptist Scalabrini's plea for aid to Italian immigrants Frances and her sisters went to New York in 1889. They immediately gathered orphan children into a home. When asked to open a hospital, Frances pleaded her ignorance of health care. The Blessed Mother appeared to her in a dream tending the sick. I am doing the work you refuse to do, she told Frances. Columbus Hospital in Chicago was Francis's next effort. In 28 years, she founded 67 schools, orphanages, convents, and hospitals in the United States and beyond. Francis died in 1917. Out of the Red Sea, an unimpeded road appeared, and they bounded about like lambs. A reading from the Book of Wisdom, Chapter 18, Verse 14 When peaceful stillness compassed everything, and the night in its swift course was half spent, your all-powerful word from heaven's royal throne abounded a fierce warrior into the doomed land, bearing the sharp sword of your inexorable decree. And as he alighted, he filled every place with death. He still reached to heaven while he stood upon the earth. For all creation in its several kinds was being made over anew serving its natural laws, that your children might be preserved unharmed. The cloud overshadowed their camp, and out of what had before been water, dry land was seen emerging. Out of the Red Sea, an unimpeded road, and a grassy plain out of the mighty flood, Over this cross the whole nation sheltered by your hand, after they beheld stupendous wonders. For they ranged about like horses, and bounded about like lambs, praising you, O Lord, their Deliverer. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105 Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Sing to Him, sing His praise, proclaim all His wondrous deeds. Glory in His holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Then He struck every firstborn throughout their land, the first fruits of all their manhood. And He led them forth, laden with silver and gold, with not a weakling among their tribes. 
for he remembered his holy word to his servant Abraham. And he led forth his people with joy, with shouts of joy, his chosen ones. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled Secure as God's Chosen Ones The omnipotent hand of God is at work and whether we want to or not we must submit. Of the many passengers, men and women very few remain on deck, and there are only six who dine at the table. Woe to whoever dares to confront the situation. The best thing to do is to remain under cover on deck and enjoy the fresh air, even in the rain, if it should fall. Last night, I remained half-dressed to be prepared to save myself and the sisters because a storm was threatening. But the good God who watches over his spouses protected us. The steamer kept on pitching and rolling from one side to the other all through the night. Then this morning I arose early to go on deck to see this rare sight. How splendid the ocean seems with its magnificent motion! What swelling! What foam! If you could only see the waves, what an enchanting sight to behold. No one can stand at the prow because the waves cross the deck at every moment. At the stern, one feels comfortable, and it is here, lying on a deck chair, that I am writing to you as well as I can. One single mighty wave could engulf us all in a moment. But he who created the sea and the waves and who commands them to rise as high as mountains will protect his beloved creatures, especially his dear spouses. God loved us before he created the seas, which he ordained for us to use and to enjoy. The good God has loved us from all eternity. Let us love him and serve him with joy for the few brief days we have to live. If all of you were only with me now, crossing the ocean, you would exclaim with me, 
How great, how loving, how wonderful is God in His works! But the ocean of grace, my daughters, that God showers on us every hour of our life, is far superior to anything in nature. Even the splendor of the firmament is eclipsed by the graces with which God enriches His beloved spouses. This meditation was written by St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, who died in 1917 and was born in Lombardy, Italy and worked in the United States caring for the Italian immigrants. She was the first American citizen to be canonized. She wrote these words in 1890 on board a ship to the United States. Laudate Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer I believe in you, Lord, for you are mine and have proved your love for me. I trust you, for you have never let me down and know what is best for my life. I love you, Lord, for all your gifts. I desire to love and to do your will. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenges. Teach me to pray always, Lord. Our first challenge, becoming weary. We can become weary in prayer when we don't see results. This happens because we have a distorted idea of prayer or we have taken on worldly views that undermine our appreciation for its true value or simply because we experience what seems to be failure in prayer. Prayer is a gift and comes from the Holy Spirit. It is neither a machine nor a magic formula. It requires effort on our part, for it is an act of love, self-giving. Prayer works if I persevere and allow God to act. Sometimes I will not see its effects. To continue to seek God in prayer is already the best fruit of prayer. Do I depend on Him? Challenge number two, the judge. If prayer is about giving myself and depending more on God, then it becomes a question of how I understand God. I depend only on those I trust, and I trust only those who have proven their love and ability to support me. Do I really believe God is all good, all loving, and all powerful? Do I believe He cares about me? God for us is a judge, but so much more. He is, first of all, a loving Father and a dedicated, unconditional Savior and lover. As a loving Father, He wants our trusting dependence. He wants us to believe. Challenge number three, the chosen ones. Who are we for God? We are more than simple creatures, more than worthless slaves. We are beloved children for whom he died and to whom he gives everything. We are the frustrated scholars and broken lovers that he desires to raise up to share his infinite truth and love. We are chosen ones chosen for Him, for happiness, forever. Out of the darkness and slavery of sin, He frees us so that His glory will shine in us. Now, if we are all this and more for God, why do we doubt in prayer? Let us place all our confidence in Him. Our Conversation with Christ Dear Lord Jesus, increase my knowledge of your love for me. Help me to trust you in my everyday life. Open my heart to persevere in prayer. Grant me the humility to see how I need to pray, always, 
and in so many ways. Teach me what prayer is and how to do it well for love of you. Our Resolution Throughout the day, I will dedicate myself to simple, small invocations and prayers that express my love, gratitude, and trust in God. Meditation What can a shameless and unjust judge pitted against a crusty and pestering woman teach us about justice and vindication in the kingdom of God. Jesus tells a story that is all too true. A defenseless widow is taken advantage of and refused her rights. Through sheer persistence, she wears down an unscrupulous judge until he gives her justice. Persistence pays off, and that's especially true for those who trust in God. Jesus illustrates how God, as our judge and vindicator, is much quicker to come to our defense and to bring us his justice, blessing, and help when we need it. But we can easily lose heart and forget to ask our Heavenly Father for his grace and help. Faith-filled persistence reaps the fruit of justice and grace. Jesus told the parable of the persistent widow and the unjust judge, Luke 18, 1, to give his disciples fresh hope and confidence in God's unfailing care and favor towards us in grace. In this present life, we can expect trials and adversity, but we are not without hope in God. The day of the last judgment will reveal that God's justice triumphs over all the injustices perpetrated by a fallen world of sinful people and that God's love is stronger than death. Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 6. Those who put their faith in God and entrust their lives to Him can look forward with hope and confident assurance. They will receive their reward if not fully in this present life, then surely and completely in the age to come in God's kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. Romans 14, 17 Jesus ends his parable with a probing question for us. Will you and I have faith, the kind of faith that doesn't give up or lose hope in God, but perseveres to the end of our lives, and to the end of this present age when the Lord Jesus will return in glory as ruler and judge of all. Faith is an entirely free gift that God makes to us. We could not believe, trust, and persevere with hope if God did not first draw us to himself and reveal to us his merciful love and care. If we want to grow and persevere in faith until the end of our days, then we must nourish our faith with the Word of God and ask the Lord to increase it. Luke 17, 5 When trials and setbacks disappoint you, where do you place your hope and confidence? Do you pray with expectant faith and confident hope in God's merciful care and provision for you? Lord Jesus, increase my faith and make it strong that I may never doubt your word and promise to be with me always. In every situation I face, whether trials, setbacks, or loss, may I always find strength in your unfailing love and find joy and contentment in having you alone as a treasure of my heart. Further reflection entitled, Persist and Pray. Quote, Listen to what the corrupt judge has to say. Luke 18, 6. Jesus doesn't tell us to pay attention to what the widow says. 
He tells us to pay attention to what the corrupt judge says. Luke 18.6 One message of this parable is that persistent evil can be worn down by persistent good. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 1 John 4.4 It may seem to us that there are strongholds of the evil one that cannot be defeated. Evil in our culture may seem to be as giant as Goliath. 1 Samuel 17.4 The widow might seem no more mighty than did the youth David. Too small, too weak, no chance to be victorious. Thus, Jesus tells us to pay attention to the response of the judge who is evil, powerful, and dishonest. The powerful judge is worn down by the seemingly helpless widow. Evil may seem powerful, but it will not prevail. Therefore, be encouraged and persist in your prayers. If you pray for godly intentions that seem to be unanswered, Realize that Jesus is telling you to persist in your prayer. He tells you to pray always and not lose heart. Luke 18.1 In fact, he even says this is a necessity. Luke 18.1 Do not lose heart. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 And without losing heart. Our prayer. Father, you speak to me through Jesus. Hebrew 1 2. Bring me to a new dimension of prayer and trust. God's promise to us. He led forth his people with joy, with shouts of joy, his chosen ones. Psalm 105 43. Thomas A. Kempis quote from The Imitation of Christ, Nature is afraid of shame and contempt, but grace is glad to suffer reproach for the name of Jesus. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.